Today in series of Doplexus KL interviews, we have with us Dr. Subhadra Jalali, who is a director at Newborn Eye Health Alliance, Orissa, and director quality at LV Prasad Eye Institute. Dr. Subhadra is a consultant at Kanuri Samantha Retina Vitrus Service and Jasti V. Ramanna Children's Eye Care Center. She has several fellowships and has received American Academy Achievement Award, Asia Specific Academy for Ophthalmology Achievement Award, and several prestigious awards. She is an expert advisory in retinopathy of prematurity (ROP) to government of Bangladesh and Philippines. Thank you, ma'am, for this interview. Uh, so let's begin with our first question, uh, ma'am. According to you, what should be the retinal examination to be done for premature babies in case of ROP? Okay, thank you for having me here. I think I am representing all those newborns who have become blind uh, because they were not tested on time. So time is the key. So these uh, preterm newborns are not born blind. They start getting the problem within 15-20 days of birth. Mm. So the ideal time to screen them and check their retina is between 20 to 30 days. So we have given slogan diya hai, 30 days to birth. Yeah. So 30 days from the birth, please get your newborn baby's eye checked within 30 days if it is preterm. But if there is somebody in the family like an elder brother or cousin who has become blind at birth, then this baby must be screened within 24 hours of birth. And best is that if there is some blind person, parent, wife, mother or other brother or sister who is blind at very young age, then even before you get pregnant second time, you must discuss with the eye specialist because 60% of childhood blinding disorders are genetic and they can affect the next child. Yes. So you must have a counselling before you get pregnant what is the risk to my next child, when should I get my... And many of these children, we need to deliver before time and examine within 24 hours of birth. Right. And we need to do their TIFA fetal scan for eyes throughout the pregnancy. So they, that is very important message I want to give. But if there was no family history, but it is a preterm baby, even if it was not received oxygen or it has not been in the incubator, mm -hmm. but it is preterm. So preterm means less than one month from due yeah. date or less than 2 kilograms, then please get the retina checked by a specialist within 30 days of birth. Do bun zindagi ke polio ke liye, tis din roshni ke aapki aankho ke liye. Absolutely. Uh, so my next question is, um, do you think that new advances in transconjunctival PPV systems have provided potential benefits for both patient and surgeons? Yeah, especially in these uh, small babies, previously we were not doing sutureless surgery. Uh, because we thought that you know we have to put the stitches because child may rub his eyes and all but now uh, over last five years I have been doing sutureless surgery and it's extremely good for the baby because the baby after first operative day can just open their eyes they are not in any pain we don't have to give any painkillers even the eye drops after surgery we have to give minimal because there's not much inflammation so it's really become good and my time of surgery has reduced by at least 20 minutes so in these critical babies where the anesthesia risk is very high yeah. and the anesthetist is always on your head that please complete the case, do fast. So there I think the sutureless has done tremendous thing and I will be showing some videos in the conference okay. of sutureless surgery. So I'm, I'm very happy at this uh, innovation which has happened yeah. that we can do it in babies. Some people think we can't do but mm -hmm. if we take proper precautions, it's, it's done differently than we do in adults sutureless. Uh, but in the baby, there's a different technique. But with that, we are able to do very good surgery. Uh, doctor, what is the impact of recurrent retinal detachment, RD surgery outcomes, for regatomogenous retinal detachment? See, one thing we have to remember that retina is like a cloth. Okay, you can stitch it at one place, it can tear off at another place. So, it can detach again. So, in some people, I would say almost 20% patients, the retina detaches again. And this is a very challenging surgery, but I am very happy to report that in most cases, uh, second, third, fourth surgery, we are able to reattach the retina. But the best outcome we get in the first surgery itself. So I think the surgeons who are doing detachment surgery must attempt to do the detachment surgery meticulously in the first sitting itself. And we can get 80 to 90 percent success. But if there is a recurrence, uh, there are two schools of thought. So some people think if there is a recurrence, you should operate it immediately. Uh, but I think that you should wait for some time 
let the detachment membranes mature because then in four to six weeks they become easier to see and they become mature and easier to remove. Uh, so then the success rate becomes better. But of course there is difference. But I think more important is to recognize detachment. The problem is that retinal detachments are silent. They don't cause any pain. Uh, they don't cause any redness. So many times patients don't know that they have a detachment. They may notice some uh, flashing of light or they may notice some black spot floating around. Uh, so that is the time that you need to worry that, you know, I need to go and see a retina specialist. And some non-retina doctors are not aware of detachment. So I just want to highlight what are the risks for detachment. So anybody who has high minus power is wearing glasses more than minus two or they have had any injury, especially cricket ball injuries or tennis ball injuries or they have had a cataract surgery, then these patients are at high risk of detachment. So they should get their retina checked every six months to detect, is my retina getting weak? Can I get it repaired before it detaches? It's like a preventive maintenance of your walls. You know, in the house you always check, is there any crack in the wall? Should I put cement? Oh, it's a small crack, I don't need to put. It's a big crack before my wall comes down. So these are preventive maintenance of the eye, which many people are not aware. And I just want to highlight that detachments are very serious. Uh, almost 5% of patients can go blind with detachment in spite of multiple surgeries. So if we can prevent detachments, uh, that is an opportunity and uh, you know that's better. But if they get detachments multiple times, still we can repair, but not all of them. So moving to our next question, uh, do you think that lensectomy is effective in controlling IOP in patients uh, with spherophakia and secondary glaucoma? Yes, absolutely. I think spherophakia and glaucoma the cause is the lens and we have to remove the lens i have been doing lensectomy in all these patients at very early stage of glaucoma and then they do very well it's only i think where we delay and the angle gets damaged then it doesn't work as well but still even in those cases the first step is to remove the lens because that is the cause so we should be very uh, ready that any child with microspherophakia we should think of not only for glaucoma but also for uh, refractive error because they get intermittent angle closure mm -hmm. and that is not detected so the glaucoma comes very slowly it's not yeah. acute sudden onset although it can occur acute sudden onset also but i'm 100 percent sure and we have uh, published this also that in spherophakia the first step must be removing the lens because that is the cause of that movement of the lens forward and backwards causes glaucoma and then of course we have to follow some patients will still need medication mm -hmm. Uh, and some may need further surgery, but I think if you remove the lens, uh, you achieve a lot. You win the battle much faster and easier. Uh, so moving to our last question, uh, how do you think that an online platform for doctors like Docplexes help in spreading awareness about retinopathy of prematurity? Uh, see, India has the largest number of preterm borns anywhere in the world. You, do you know how many children are born in India every year? Three crore, 30 million children are born every year. And ideally, each of this child window to the world is his eyes and they can become blind and India has largest number of blind children not only from ROP but from many other childhood diseases because we don't have this information to parents and doctors that newborn babies eyes need to be checked and how do you check it I just want to show this picture uh, you know it's very simple just see this this is how you need to check with your cell phone at home grandmother can do it just take the baby to a dark room and click a picture close by with the eyes open and you should see red okay if you see white or black mm. then you immediately need to go to a doctor okay. so this simple test is not being done in our country which is done in all the western countries so they detect these problems very early so i think platforms like docplex if you just spread this message yes. that you know apne bacche ki aankh check karao get your eyes checked and this is not unfortunately taught to us in our medical school i don't know why it's not taught like all of us see you're not a doctor or you're a doctor you know that if i have a newborn baby i need to vaccinate yes. it okay you may not know when i have to vaccinate mm. but you will ask the doctor doctor when are you starting my child's vaccination yes. so same way i want that every citizen every parent every mother grandmother should know that i should ask my doctor when are you doing my mm. baby's eye checkup eye check. you know so that is one and that is the message you know platforms like doctors can spread to the medical community See, even doctors don't know. I have seen doctors' children becoming blind. I have seen eye specialist children becoming blind because they didn't have this knowledge that, you know, my child needs an eye examination with a red glow. This is a very simple test. But if it is a preterm baby, then it needs detailed checkup within 30 days of birth. Now, for this information to go out, who is going to do it? 
right? The West is not going to do it for us. It is our media communicators who need to communicate and communicate effectively because even if we tell some parent or some doctor tells, then the public has this perception that, you know, they are doing unnecessary tests. There's some cut practice. Uh, there's something fishy about it. There's some research going on. So when I talk to parents and I ask, why did you think this? They said, we never heard in the media. You know, they, they rely on the media, yeah, they yeah. trust the media. They say on media we heard breastfeeding karo, yeah. we heard uh, do bun zindagi ke, we heard polio drops. But nobody, no brand ambassador, no, uh, you know, Lok Sabha TV or any TV is telling us, you know, aang um, check uh, karo. So we think this is some unnecessary test. So if this message goes with the media communicators that, you know, eye checkup is important, it is essential and we have very good treatments within 10, 20 days of birth to correct that defect. People think children are born blind, they go to blind schools and that is the story. That is not the correct story and that correction only media can do. Yes. We might have all the knowledge in the books, it is there for last 60 years that newborn babies need eye checkup. Mm. But from the journal, I write on so many papers, but who reads them? So it's the media communicators like Docplex who have to take this scientific message, put it in a layman's language and spread it both to doctors because they are the key opinion leaders. Yes. You know, I have seen, you know, in the family, the doctor telling, like somebody told some new doctor who has new knowledge, has told the mother, please take your baby for eye checkup. But the family doctor, the uncle or grandfather, who's a doctor, hmm. told, no, 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 there's nothing like nothing this. I have never heard about it. You know, so that that thing is missing. Yes, so, so I think that, you know, Dr. Plus and many more other uh, media communicators, health media communicators, um, I think we are uh, all the time on our cell phone. And we see so many WhatsApp messages which may not have an impact on our life. But we keep on, you know, spending our time on that. But if we have, you know, media messages which really impact people, which make a huge dent on their whole life. You see, a blind child is not just a child who is blind and who has to go to blind school. The mothers are castracized. They are told you have given birth to a blind child. Divorces happen. The mothers are abandoned. In the rural areas, there is no uh, support for these blind children in terms of blind school or integrated school or training in Braille. So it cascades into a huge problem. Okay, And I think if there is a media communication, very effectively, just with two lines, you can make people realize that why it is important to get my eyes or my baby's eye checked. Because if the baby cannot say, I am seeing blood, the baby cannot tell you that I am not seeing my mother's face clearly. If the baby sees little light, it will run and you will not even notice the child has some problem till it goes to school and then the teacher says the child is not copying from board. And then the parents say, yeah, I noticed my child's eyes little, um, you know, at an angle or my child's eye was shaking or my child goes very close to TV. But I thought it's just a habit and they never go and check it. Okay, so these are, you know, some of the things we want uh, media to highlight. What are the things, what are the warning signs, at what point of time the eyes have to be checked up. Okay, and I say, as I said, you know, all babies must have eye checkup within 24 hours of birth. If there is a family history of blindness, they must have more detailed checkup. And if they are preterm, then at birth and then within 20 to 30 days. And uh, of course, the media is going to play a huge role in that. I just want to add yeah. one more thing. Yes, yeah, sure. That uh, this is a website of Prime Minister of India, Sankalp Se Siddhi. And it says that citizens can vote for a cause. What do you want the government to do for you? And I have put this up there that we want the government to spread this message through various media of blindness in newborns. So please go to this website and vote for us because we are number five out of five, four thousand pledges, and we want to be number one yes, in that. Definitely. So this is uh, I'm just putting it here. Sankalp says Siddhi, uh, vote for the cause of newborn blindness because it may come to your home. It may come to your sister's child, your brother's yes. child, your servant's child. Uh, it is not something which is, uh, you know, which spares anybody. Mm. It doesn't spare the gender. It doesn't spare the, uh, you know, socioeconomic status. Anybody and everybody's child is at risk of blindness. Mm. And we want to prevent it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you.